Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be talking about the quick and easy way that you can flash new firmware onto your FR Sky receivers or you can flash new firmware onto the internal module in your radio as well. Now there have been loads of fantastic videos around that have shown you exactly what to do to sort this out but I've had a couple of questions recently from subscribers and Patreons and they have been asking for me to show how it all works. And I think it's not a bad idea at all because it's actually quite a cool thing to be able to do and I don't have a video on it at all. So if you're just using my videos to figure out the capabilities of the radios and OpenTX, then you might not even be aware of this. So what we're going to do in this video, we're actually going to upgrade one of my receivers here. This is an X8R. This is one of the original receivers that I've had for a little while. For the project I'm about to use it for though, I don't want it running the EU listen before transmit firmware and that's what the EU LBT sticker means on there. If you get a receiver and it doesn't have that sticker on it there's a very good chance that it actually isn't the EU version of the firmware on these things it's the international version and the problem you've got of course and we talked about this a while ago is that if you are running the international version of the software on your radio it won't talk to EU LBT transmitters and vice versa so you have to have the same running on each and it's very common if you're ordering your receivers from somewhere that doesn't give you the option to select whether you want the international or the EU LBT version that you might get the wrong one. So being able to update and flash these receivers quickly and easily is a handy thing to know how to do. Now you will need a little cable, uh, a standard servo cables going to work fine here all you're going to have to do is switch the power and ground wires across at one end and then one end goes into the back of the radio onto the three pins in the JR bay but we'll come back to that in a minute I'll show you how to do that and the other end is going to go into the smart port connection on the receiver now I've got these two cables here that I keep in my bag and these are the ones that I flash literally dozens and dozens of receivers with one of them is for the X8R style receivers where they have standard servo connections for the S port connection and then there's this other mini cable which is there which is one of the modified little cables that you get with things like the X4R receivers and that plugs into the little smart port thing at the side and that allows me to do exactly the same. But before we get into that let's very quickly talk about where you get your firmware from. Now the easiest thing to do is to download it from the FR Sky rc.com website, go into the download area, find the particular product that you're interested in. You might have to scroll down a little bit to find it. We're looking of course for the X8R, that's the one we're about to flash and then it'll give you all of the bits and pieces. We can download the manual and there's the firmware. Now it can be a little bit tricky, what you have to do is actually read some of this. It does appear that FR Sky is now starting to release both versions, the international and the EU LBT version, in the same file, which is a lot easier because before they were updating them separately and it was getting a little bit tricky. You had to kind of read through and if it said something about LBT then it was probably the EU LBT version. If it didn't talk about EU LBT it probably wasn't. But what we're going to do is we're going to download the latest version that I can see here on the website, dated 2017, the 7th of March. And we're going to download that onto our desktop. I'm just going to stick it onto uh, the desktop right now, just so that we can have a look. If I open that file up, there it is. If I double click on there, then that is the actual firmware and uh, usefully they've called one the EU build that's going to be the EU LBT firmware that you need to flash if you have an EU LBT radio and then you have the other one where that's the non-EU build or the international version. So be a little bit careful about what things are being named. Uh, it does seem that it's changing a little bit. If it talks about EU or LBT, then it's going to be the EU version. If it doesn't talk about those two things, it's probably what I would call the non-EU or international version. So now we've got those two, the next thing to do is pop them into the firmware directory of the SD card inside the radio. Now two ways to do that. You could actually pop the SD card out of the radio and plug it into your computer and then navigate and just copy whichever file you're interested in into the firmware's directory on the SD card. Or the other way you can do it is press the two horizontal trim tabs into the center position and power the radio on. That'll put it in USB mode. If you then connect your radio to the computer with the USB cable, then the SD card will appear 
on your computer. Again, you're looking for drive that has the firmware's directory. Copy the file that you're interested in into there, and then we have done a lot of the hard work. Personally, I'd recommend finding one of these versions that work and that you're happy with, and then keep those master sets of firmware on your radio, and then you'll always have them if you accidentally get a radio receiver delivered that's on the wrong firmware. So okay, let's go back to the desktop and let's actually flash this thing. Now to make it even more complicated, there are actually two options for where you're going to plug your receiver into the radio to make it all work. Because so far I've been talking about plugging it into the JR Bay pins in the back of the radio. Now most of the radios in the FR Sky lineup, this will work fine. And this is the way that I'm going to show in the video in a second. However, if you have one of the later QX7s that has the little three pins in the bottom of the radio, this is my very early QX7. It doesn't have the board in here with the pins at all, so I can't plug it in here. If you have one like this, then you're gonna use the JR base style that we're about to have a look at. And here is the X7S radio, which is the updated version of that radio that we looked at a while ago. And if you look at the bottom of here, you can actually see that there are three smart port pins. So if you have a radio with this kind of output at the bottom for smart port, this is where you're going to connect the receiver to, not into the JR bay. Now I know that's making everything even more complicated than it probably needs to be, but I just wanted to point that out. So if you have an QX7 or an X7S that has these pins at the bottom, then make sure that you're plugging the receiver using a standard servo cable Observe the polarity and the connection on this diagram. If you're not going to use one of these radios or you have an early QX7 like mine is where these pins are not present at the bottom of the case, then you're going to use the JR Bay. So with that said, let's carry on. Let me show you how to do it with the JR Bay. The only difference with this process we're about to go through is you're obviously going to plug the receiver into the smart port pins on the bottom of the radio if you have a radio that has these pins. So now we've got the SD card inside the radio with those files in the firmware directory. We need to wire up the receiver to the back of the radio. Now the bottom three pins of the five pins that are in the JR bay are the ones that we're going to use here. The bottom pin is signal, the pin above it is ground, and the pin above that can provide the plus five volts you need to power the receiver. Now we are actually going to flash this brand new X8R that's been supplied with the wrong firmware, so we need to change it. And you can flash the firmware multiple times, so if you're not sure which radio uh, version you have, then if uh, you can't bind to it, you can always flash it with the other one and try it. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that special little cable that we've made. So this is a standard double-ended servo cable. One end is the standard layout, so that is the one that plugs into the receiver. So I'm going to plug that into the smart port connector, uh, observing polarity, of course. So the black wire is going to the negative pin. The other side is then going to plug onto those three wires in the back of the radio. And again, making sure polarity is correct. Now the polarity of these isn't the same as a normal servo cable, which is why you have to change it. So it's signal at the bottom, ground in the middle, and plus five volts at the top. So there we have the wiring done. Now let me just, hopefully you'll be able to, I'll put this out the side, you'll be able to see the receiver as I do this. There we go. So let me power up the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. And what I'd recommend, if you're going to be doing this a lot, I would actually set up a model memory that's just set to uh, flash receivers. And I actually have that on here. This is uh, model memory one. And what I have set up is uh, I've actually got the internal turned off and I've turned the external mode on. And on this particular radio, I had to do that because otherwise it doesn't supply the five, power, five volts that you need to power the receiver. So if you do this and your receiver is completely black and you've got your wiring right, you might need to go in here and enable your external radio frequency bay. And that's just gonna make sure that the five volts is coming out of these wires here in the back. And now we are ready to flash this radio. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna exit out right to the very top. We're gonna press and hold the menu button and then we're going to page until we find the SD card. And now this should look familiar from what we were just looking at. There are all 
of the subdirectories of the different pieces in and there's the firmware directory that we copied everything into. So I'm going to hit the enter button and here are all of the firmwares that I can use and the ones that I use regularly. So I'm actually going to flash the XATAR non-EU. You can change the name of the actual file. Uh, so I'd recommend if you're going to do this a lot, make sure you keep the date on there because that kind of gives you the version because these things aren't versioned apart from the date really. Um, and also put on here whether it's non-EU or whether it's EU. So I'm going to press and hold enter. And this is the bit where it says flash external or internal module. Now the internal module is the module inside this radio. So this is the way you do it. If you downloaded the firmware for the internal module and you wanted to flash it, that's what you'd select. We of course want to flash the external module. Let me do it so you can see the light on the receiver. I'm going to press and hold enter. And now it says writing on the screen. And hopefully you can see here now that the green light is flashing and the red light is pulsing as well. And we have our little progress bar uh, moving up. Make sure that you don't disconnect everything. Make sure that the battery is nice and charged because if anything goes wrong during this, uh, it could make life interesting. But this isn't going to take too long. It takes about 45, 50 seconds. Just keep an eye on everything until it's absolutely finished. I always find myself holding my breath during this little bit just to make sure that I don't bugger up a 30 pound receiver. To be fair though, with all these ones I've done, uh, touch wood, I've never actually had a problem. So here we come, coming to the end. There we go, it is now done. So. I can unplug the receiver from the back of the radio. We can exit out of that. And now that should be running the international version of the firmware and I can crack on. The other thing that you might uh, be aware of is that sometimes on some receivers like the X4R, the S port is a slightly different format. I would use one of the spare cables that you get uh, to make up another cable here so I use this one to flash these kind of receivers and once you've got one of each cable just make sure that you keep them safe uh, because you'll use them again and again if you're going to buy your receivers from places where you don't get a chance to actually pick which kind of receiver firmware you want on there in the first place. Last couple of things to comment on, uh, we did a couple of videos a while ago where I actually flashed things like these little cute XM and XM plus receivers. With these you tend to just connect the standard signal ground and plus 5 volt pins. They don't have a smart port on them but you just connect to them in those way. You might have to temporarily solder the connections up on them just to flash them but that'll work fine. And for these particular receivers there's some really cute firmware on the website that actually allows you to do things like have channel 16 on the outputs for things like SBUS will automatically show the RSSI value and that's amazing for things like Betaflight. So even if you weren't planning to do this, uh, it's definitely worthwhile making yourself up a set of wires and keeping them handy in your transmitter bag in case you ever want to change or upgrade the functionality of the receivers that you get. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.